Hear me out. Wouldn't it be great if Firefly or Midjourney or some other AI creation tool delivered layered artwork? Why? So you can move things around and edit elements independently. That's why. I created this image in Adobe Firefly. The prompt was something to the effect of a quartet of mice in Paris. And you can see that Firefly got a little carried away with the Eiffel Towers in the background. We can fix that easily enough. More to the point, this is a flat image. So if we want to be able to modify each of the mice independently, we're going to have to divide them into independent layers manually as I've done right here. And so notice one of the things I, I did was I switched mice one and two. And so this guy with this strange instrument right here was in the first position, the fiddle guys in the second position. I reversed them, I switched them. As you can see, I gave this guy a new hand, I gave this guy a top hat. And so you can see I can turn off mouse one. That's now in the second position. I gave mouse four a party hat. I could turn him off as well. I could turn the other two off. Paris suffers in the background by itself, but it looks great with these four independent mice. And so one thing you could do is you could switch to the object selection tool. The object selection tool works beautifully for stuff from Firefly in particular. Notice if I hover over the first mouse right here, I can see its outline. And so I could click on it to select it, and then I might shift click on its instrument to select it as well. And then I could jump it to an independent layer by pressing Control J, easiest way to work. And now notice I have that mouse on an independent layer. Problem is, it's fixed in a way, right? The mask is fixed because I just went ahead and jumped all those pixels to an independent layer. If I later decide I need to modify the mask, I'm out of luck if I take this approach. So a more flexible way to work, I'll just go ahead and restore the original image, is to, let's see, I'll undo all that stuff, is to start with a copy of this entire layer, this background layer. Or you could just select part of the image if you want to. If you want to cut down on file size, you could grab the rectangular marquee tool and just kind of generally select mouse one right here and jump it to a, a new layer by pressing Control alt j command option j on a mac and i'll just call this guy one because i'm going to mask it and its name is going to it's going to take up a lot of space in the layers panel but anyway now i want to mask this layer now i've got a lot of room to work you can see if i turn off the background i've got all this stuff to mask and so i'll grab the object selection tool once again because it really is handy for selecting stuff you make in Firefly. So I'll click to select the mouse, and then I'll shift click to select its instrument right there. And then if I need to select more stuff, notice that not everything is selected inside the mouse. Then the easiest way to work is to switch to the quick selection tool right there. Just go ahead and grab that guy. Maybe increase the size of my cursor, and then you should just be able to drag in order to add to the selection, to the interior of the selection in the case of this guy. And now I'll drop down to my taskbar and I'll click on this layer mask icon right there. And I have a layer mask, which means I can now modify the mask. So for example, the mask is selected. And so I could switch to the smudge tool right here. And I could smear in, assuming the mask is selected, very important that you don't go smear in the mouse. And I could smear its, its hair down a little bit as well. I'm not being very accurate, but uh, I want to move through this fairly quickly. And then, oh, I've made a mess of the ear. In which case, I could just switch to the brush tool. And I, black is my foreground color. So I'll just paint with black right here in order to paint away this excess ear. Press the X key to paint back some of the ear like so. Press the X key again, because this time I want to paint away some of this junk underneath the mouse and I could fix its toes and all kinds of stuff. And you can see that makes for a very flexible composition. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that three more times. And I want you to see that I have indeed now separated all the mice. Notice if I turn off the background, each one of the mice is on an independent layer which means I can modify the background so that the mice aren't there anymore. 
which is going to make for more flexible settings. So in other words, I'll turn off all the mice right there. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll switch to the lasso tool by pressing the L key and I'll just go ahead and roughly select the mice. You don't want to be too terribly careful about it because you really want them to be on the interior of the selection. And then just click generate to fill and give it some help. I'm going to say Paris at sunset because otherwise the mice and all this dirt and everything else affect the contents of the generative to fill layer. And as a result, I end up getting a kind of apocalyptic effect where everything's been just blown away, which is not what I want. So I want a really nice, pretty version of Paris if I can get one. Now, probably I won't. Probably it'll uh, be a little munched or, or, you know, well, actually this looks great, doesn't it? It's just that I don't really want these 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 things up front, uh, these vases or whatever they are. Now I've got some statues, and now I have uh, some other stuff. They're they're all really cool, but they don't work very well. They're not going to work very well with the mice. So I tell you what, why don't we keep this one, and I'll just kind of roughly select this statue right here, and I'll click generate to fill and click generate. And I'm not entering a prompt this time. I just want to get rid of each of these items. And I'm going to do so independently. In other words, I'll, I'll get rid of one statue at a time. Because Well, that worked out beautifully. Because otherwise we're going to get low res results. All right, we'll see if that works for me. And I'll try this guy. And I might actually kind of shift drag into the base that's holding up the statue. I like the idea of working from what I have because that way this ground down here at the bottom stays in place and the mice therefore have something to stand on. Wait, wouldn't it be fun to add some more details like hats and feet and better eyes? I mean, here's what we have so far and here are the enhancements and that's so much better, which is why I show you exactly how it works at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to the rare pleasure of working with singing mice on independent layers. So here's the variations just so we can see what they look like. And then you might want to apply the remove tool, by the way. So I'll just create a new layer by uh, pressing control shift N and I'll call this guy removal like so. And then I will switch to the remove tool right here. Make sure that sample all layers is turned on up in the options bar. And now I'm just going to kind of paint away some stuff I don't want. I have no idea what this thing is, but I don't want it to be part of the composition. Sure enough, I got rid of it. That's great. That's the purpose of the remove tool after all is to remove stuff that you don't want. And there's a little train or something down there. Let's get rid of that. And now, now what I'll do is I'll turn the mice back on. I'll just go ahead and drag up the stack here. And there's the mice. They're looking great. I, I want to distinguish them from the background a little more. Actually, wait a sec. I want to do a little more work on this. I want to get rid of the extra Eiffel Towers and those things that looked like smokestacks a moment ago in the background. And I might paint this thing away. You know, you, you go nuts. Do whatever you want. But if you're just interested in working on the background, then don't have the mice or whatever, you know, foreground objects you're working with turned on. Have them turned off for a moment. And now I'm going to drop down to the black white icon and turn on photo filter. This is just going to allow me to create a kind of cool effect. I'll switch to cooling filter 82. Not really going to get into detail about what these do, but what they do obviously do is add some color to the scene. Relative, relative color. And then I'll add a layer mask by clicking on this icon right there. And I'll go to my gradient tool. Working pretty quickly because I want to get this over with. Notice black to white is my gradient up here in the options bar. So I'll drag like so, so that we have dirt in the foreground and we have this blueness setting off the mice in the, in the background. And now what I can do, this is great. I could take all these various layers. I'll go ahead and convert this guy to a layer called Firefly. And I'll take all these and I'll group them together by alt clicking on a little folder icon right there so I can name it. And I'll call it Paris, but of course, because that's what it is, right? And now I've got the mice independent of Paris and I can drag them around. So I could press the V key to get my move tool. I could switch to mouse one right here and I could drag it to the second position like so. 
no problem, drag mouse two to the first position. And notice the edges are going to work out pretty well. Not great, but pretty well because this is the, this is the background they vaguely came from. So they're going to kind of match pretty well. There, there are all kinds of problems going on with the mice. For example, they do have weird hands, which is to be expected. And so, for example, let's say... I want to I want to fix this hand associated with mouse three right here. Select mouse three, select that three layer, and then grab the lasso tool, just the easiest way to work, and vaguely marquee this guy right here. And I just kind of want it to go away because we already have a couple of hands. And so I'm going to click generate to fill, and I'll just click generate, and I'll see what happens now. You do want to make sure that the layer you're working on, more or less, is the top selected layer. Because otherwise, you're going to create a new layer in back of it, and that's going to be hard to keep track of. That looks beautiful. But I do want to show you. I'll switch to the Move tool again. If I drag it to a different location, notice it has some of the background built into it. So you can try to mask it more tightly, although it won't cover up the bad hand if you do that. And so forth. So it's just every time you apply more generative fill, it is kind of a static modification, and though in that it it kind of builds the background into it. It's flexible, however, it's not static, in that you can regenerate. If if I were to take three and its generative fill layer and drag it to a different location, like so, you can see that background gets messed up. But now I just click on that layer and click generate again the generative fill layer and click generate. And that's going to use that same selection in order to reevaluate that background. With any luck, it's going to look very similar. And yeah, look, and it just blended in the new background. So it is going to take up more room. It's going to add to the file size. You can get rid of the old variations if you don't like them. And then I'll, I'll get rid, well, no, I'll keep, I'll keep uh, mouse four right here. And I might... Oops, I don't want that. I've got the move tool still selected. I'll press the L key to switch to the lasso tool. And I'll kind of grab this little hand, this mutilated hand right there. Click generative fill. And I'm going to call the, I'm going to actually enter a prompt this time. I'm going to say mouse hand in sleeve. Should work out pretty well. Maybe. Although sometimes it generates a tiny little mouse head right here when I do that. So let's see what it comes up with. But it should be better than this amalgam of about 20 fingers that we've got right there. No, that's not really that much better. Let's see a different variation. That looks great. I mean, that looks good enough is what I'm saying. It looks, well, you know, this is a, 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 whatever on that one. I, I, I no. Yeah, I like this one. That's what we're going to go with. But it does also affect his neighbor. Do you see that? So what we might have to do, this is a great use for the remove tool as well, except I'll create a new layer at the top of the stack and I'll call it repair this time around instead of remove. We're still going to use the remove tool, but this is a layer of repairing some of the bad detail like so. But again, if it works, which it kind of did, it's going to, you know, kind it, it's going it's going to build in the pixels it found around it. So it's not necessarily going to work with a different background. And I shouldn't say necessarily. It's not going to work with a different background. If you have stuff like this, you could paint over it, those highlights around the edges. That obviously made a mess of things. And you don't have different variations with the remove tool the way it is right now. So you're probably just going to want to edit the layer mask. So I just selected the layer mask for layer four. I'll switch to the smudge tool right here, which is great for this purpose. And I'll just kind of smudge things in. And then I could paint this edge in order to make it a little more accurate and so forth. Oh, there's an edge in the ear I would need to fix. So I'll press the v B, I'm sorry, B key for the brush tool right there. And I will increase the hardness of my brush. And I will paint in with white is what I want. So I'll do so. And that looks a lot better, doesn't it, though? And then this guy, I'd have to paint away the top of the edge and so forth. But generally, what I want to make clear here is that now every single one of these mice is independent, which means if I select a mouse layer and drag it around like so, I am going to move that layer independently. I'll go ahead and move this guy independently as well. Just watch out for something like layer three, 
which has some other stuff, some generative fill around it, which is going to make it a lot less flexible. So these are things to bear in mind. And that is how you take what was formerly a flat image from Firefly and turn it into a layered composition in which you can move the foreground elements any place you like. What do you think, friends? Comment below. Not to mention, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget, if you want to add expressive eyes to those singing mice, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.